This is Decent Fool with People News. Uh, this is Ronnie Video. Uh, this is part three of what we showed about uh, a couple other things about Rob Ryder. Okay, subscribe to him, y'all. Uh, he's got some great insight. Okay, um, because he just doesn't look straightforward. He digs deep and looks around because he realizes there's been harm committed out there. All right. And he's kind of doing the, we all know the good, like you guys told me, let me rephrase that, like I told you guys before, all right, Democrats and Republicans are actors, they act like they're different on the outside of the doors, but when they're inside the doors, they are one and the same, okay, and what he does, he investigates what's going on in the back doors all right and brings it to light but uh let's uh proceed forward because what he does and check out some of his other videos like land taxes and all that how they use different names different codes how they you know he goes in there and defines uh how they're wording things unlawfully but because of the ignorance of the people we don't know better, you know, uh, we've been tricked. But the funny thing is, y'all, there is remedies out there to call them out. But there has to be enough of us to call these people out and get pissed enough, right? So, uh, let's proceed forward, y'all. Co a company commander could do this, right? He would have the authority to do it. But I'm saying a church could do it because they have a gold fringe flag. So I should be able to have the preacher put his name down there. And, you know, what's his authority to administer the oath? Well, uh, he's the rector or, or priest or pastor or whatever of whatever the proper name of the church is. And that's all that it would take. And then the, the military would accept that as proper oath. Now, I don't know that that's who these other magistrates are talking about. Let's get back to that, right? Because we're, where are the other magistrates? Right? Well, if a mayor of the city could do it, then my township supervisor should be able to do it. Because he's supposed to be able to take a sworn statement. That's all That's all that we're talking about, is take a sworn statement that somebody violated, uh, committed an offense against the United States. Right? So the United States is the victim, and you're ex well the relator, because you're the one bringing it to their attention that this has happened. But once that has happened, and a copy of the process, what's the process? Well, that's the sworn statement, right? Should be returned to the office of the clerk of the court, of such a court, together with recognizance of the witnesses for their appearance to testify in the case. And that's the part that I have to get figured out. Yes, well, what do we need to give a recognizance? Do I need to give a recognizance bond? I'm happy to do it, right? Whatever they need to be satisfied for my recognizance. But once that's been filed into the clerk of the court, of the district court, you know, and here's the Western District of Michigan, and it's been done in that fashion, then the judge has to follow the frickin' rules that are in the uh, rules of criminal procedure because they were proclamated by the Supreme Court of the United States. Okay, so I just... Uh, because I had seen this. One other thing was, if you go to 18 U.S.C. 23, right, just 2318, United States Code, Section 43, Court of the United States defined, it says, as used in this title, Title 18, except or otherwise expressly provided, the term Court of the United States includes the District Court of Guam, the District Court of the Northern Mariana Islands, and the District Court of the Virginia, uh, Virgin Islands. Well, I didn't say anything about the District Court of Michigan, right? The United States District Court for the Western District of Michigan. That's not listed in there. It just lists these three courts as being courts of the United States. I think that's very interesting. However, it doesn't mean that the judges, right? Now, because, you know, we're not talking to magistrates necessarily, magistrate judges. We're talking about the judges, the United States judge or magistrate judge shall proceed under this section according to the rules proclamated by the Supreme Court of the United States. They have to do that when you have done this first section properly. Right? So we need to take it to the mayor or their magistrate 
whatever it is to get them to take our sworn statements as provided in chapter 207 of this title. Right, uh, arrested or imprisoned or or released as provided in chapter 207. So eight, title 18, United States Code, chapter 207. Which in that particular chapter of title 18 is released in detention pending judicial proceedings. Right, yada, yada, yada. So as long as they're following these sets of rules, um, uh, where did I put it here? Hang on a second. All right, so for me, the question is, well, who do I go see that fits this first paragraph, right? Now, if you've been following me for any time, you know that I went back in the, uh, a year or so ago, and I filed a complaint against uh, Whitmer for not having a proper oath office, right? And I sent it to the 63rd District Court, which is, you know, that's supposed to be my local court. So is this judge or this judge is that who they're talking about? Are they the ones that could do it? Because what I did at the time, right, is I um, oh, that is bad. Hang on here. All right, so what I had tried to do is I said, well, I'm going to take the state form that they use for a uh, complaint for a felony, right, which is people of the state of Michigan versus and I put Gretchen Esther Whitman. Right, the complaint was the United States. I was the complaining witness. Uh, yada, yada, yada. What am I complaining about? Well, basically the fact that she didn't take proper oath of office. Right, so that was I was complaining about. Well, a couple weeks later, I get this in the mail. Right, notice a hearing. Where they gave it this case number. They didn't put what court it was or any of that kind of stuff. They just gave it the case number. My name is the plaintiff. Right, Whitmer, Gretchen, Esther, not the way that I put it. That's the way they did it. But it said that there would be a hearing on Thursday, the 9-17-2020 in person, in which uh, the defendant had to come and answer. The defendant is required to attend this hearing. It didn't say I did. The plaintiff isn't required. It said the defendant. Right? So well, on the same day, I get this other one that says it's amended. And on this one, it says that the, the plaintiff has to attend. And they changed some of the other wording in there, right? But, you know, but I'm looking at it, I said, well, if you're saying this one's amended, then that means this other one is the one that's in force, right? This doesn't have on there that it was amended. So this one must be fine. It was this one that was amended. The one saying that I had to show up, right? So... Anyways, I had tried it before, but what I was doing then was I was using the state form, and I wasn't saying that it was a um, complaint against the United States, an offense against the United States, which I, you know, is what I'm going to try to do this time. So I may end up sending it to the same people again. But, uh, you know, I don't have a mayor of the city. I don't live in a city. I do have a township supervisor, so I may send it to him. See, in a case like this, if you're trying to point out like in Owen Schroyer's case, or anybody who's got, that finds himself as a defendant in a court case, especially a criminal case, right, that the person acting as the prosecutor and the person acting as the judge are conspiring against the person they claim is the defendant because nobody has sworn to the complaint. Right? So, um, and the people that have taken you, that have you in court, didn't swear take a proper oath of office. So now taking a proper oath of office, well, that isn't necessarily a conspiracy if you're doing it by yourself. But, but what it is, you could say it's defraud the United States because it's a contract deed of power of attorney, right? It's whoever utters or publishes as true any such false, forged, altered, or counterfeited writing with intent to defraud the United States knowing the same to be false, altered, forged, or counterfeited, yada, yada, yada. Right, so this is the thing about being to defraud the United States, and that's what I wanted to show next. This thing about conspiracy. That um, find that page two real quick. Right, this comes out of uh, the 
United States Department of Justice Archives. I think this has been like the uh, criminal resource manual. Well, go figure. Look at that. Home Justice Manual, Criminal Resource Manual. That did I done? Section 923, in which it says that the general conspiracy statute, oh, statute which is 18 U.S.C. 371, creates an offense if two or more persons conspire to either commit an offense against the United States, remember that's a thing that this other section talks about, it has to be an offense against the United States, or to defraud the United States, or any agency thereof in a manner or for any purpose. The operative language is so-called, uh, is the so-called defraud, defraud clause that prohibits conspiracies to defraud the United States. This clause creates a separate offense from the offense clause, right? So it makes an offense against the United States to conspire. Both offenses require the traditional elements of 371 conspiracy, although this language is very broad. Cases rely heavily on the definition of fraud provided by the Supreme Court in two earlier cases. So what is the definition of defraud? Right? Uh, include any conspiracy for the purpose of impairing, obstructing, or defeating the lawful function of any department of government. Well, that's what the freaking prosecutor and the guy acting as the uh, magistrate judge are doing. Right? They're conspiring to, def uh, to obstruct the lawful function of a department of government. Uh, would be uh, an operation to Reports as fair, partial, reasonable, accurate would be to the front of the United States by depriving it of its rightful, uh, of its lawful right and duty to progamate, of progamate and diffusing information so officially required, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so in this case, Chief Justice Taft, who had been the president, then became Chief Justice afterwards, to conspire to defraud the United States means primarily to cheat the, the government out of property or money, but it also means to interfere with or object or obstruct one of its lawful government functions by deceit, craft, trickery, or at least by means that are dishonest. Well, if you're sending people to jail on, based on unsworn uh, complaints, <laughs> that would be dishonest. It is not necessary that the government shall be subject to property or pecuniary loss by the fraud, only that the legitimate official acts or purpose shall be defeated by misrepresentation, chicane, or overreaching of those charged with carrying out the government governmental intentions. And so, as I've shown numerous times, you can go and look to see when Congress is seated for the first time. That's when they're supposed to everybody take their oath. They're supposed to take the oath to satisfy the sixth hour of the Constitution, but that's not the oath they take, and they don't do it on the first day properly, and so forth and so on. <laughs> I put it all out again in this video here with uh, the general, right? That uh, you know, you can you can download the congressional record and go find what they did and see what they did, and see that they did it wrong, and that when they did it wrong, they did not use their full legal name and they did it all as a group, well, that would be a conspiracy. Right? The guy given the oath didn't give the proper oath to the people taking the oath, and they accept that as proper, and they went ahead and do it. Well, that's a conspiracy. Whether they know it or not, it defrauded the United States. They're guilty of a conspiracy. Now, we can show mercy if they didn't know what they're doing, but I'm saying if you're learning the law as an attorney, you don't have an excuse. You're guilty. Any conspiracy for the purpose of appearing, obstructing, or defeating the lawful functions of the Department of Government. Well, that's what they did. That's what Esquires have done to the courts. The defraud part of 371 criminalizes any willful impairment of legitimate function of government, whether or not improper acts or objectives are criminal under another statute. Right? You didn't take the proper oath to office. There's not a statute that says that's wrong. But the fact that you did it and it impairs, that's going to impair government, well, that makes it wrong. The word defraud in Section 371 not only reaches uh, financial or property loss through the use of a scheme or artifice to defraud, but also designed and intended to protect the integrity of the United States and its agencies, programs, and policies. That's the part I'm talking about. 
thus proved that the United States has been defrauded under this statute does not require any showing of a monetary or proprietary loss to show that they did it wrong. That they filed a complaint that hasn't been sworn to. You got an attorney that's trying to charge you with that before uh, another esquire that's sitting there in judgment. And none of them are saying, well, this isn't a proper, uh, a proper sworn statement, which is the first step that's required by the uh, federal rules of criminal procedure. So the thing is that once you say it's an offense against the United States, well, then they have to follow the criminal rules, of, uh, federal rules of criminal procedure because they were written by the Supreme Court for the court to follow. Right? And that was all covered in here where it says that uh, the United States judge, magistrate judge shall proceed under the sex, this section according to rules proclamated by the Supreme Court of the United States. Well, those rules will be called the federal rules of criminal procedure. So none of that shit's happening right now. Uh, that's just the, the way it is. And so without getting into this anymore, I mean, it goes on and on and on about these different things, right? But, uh, there's three ways uh, to commit a conspiracy against uh, the government, right? To cheat the government out of money or, or property, to interfere or destruct, obstruct legitimate government activity, or make wrongful use of government instrumentality. That's what they're doing with the courts. So that's what's going on, right? And uh, it's covered by Title 18. And the simplest way to look at it is uh, go to Section 3041 and read the first paragraph. Say, well, okay, you need to file a piece of paper that satisfies this section here and make it an offense against the United States. And, you know, call it that in the paperwork and see what they do with it. And remember that people that commit an offense against the United States are called principles. Right? That's in Section 2 of Title 18. As far as the, the Colonel himself, well, he gets to use the UCMJ. So he can file it under the UCMJ that Biden and uh, Roberts conspired against the United States by giving Biden a royal oath of office. And because they're both uh, lawyers, attorneys, esquires, well, they don't have an excuse, right? They're guilty. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And I'm Staff Sergeant Robert Allen, or at least the Army of the United States, a.k.a. Rob Ryder. Emails quarter record at AOL.com or phone number 616-712-6179. I'm hoping that somebody other than myself and the colonel here put some paperwork in. Right? And test the system to see what happens. Right? Because this is uh, this is the conspiracy. And they may defraud the United States in offense under this section. So, you know. Let's try to find a use for it. Okay. I'll have more later. Y'all have a good day. See ya. So, this is Decent Way the People News. Not exactly sure what I'm going to call this video as this moment right here, right now. Uh, but, ignorant is the law. No excuse, right? So they say. But they keep it so hidden from us. Check his channel out. Alright. He's got some great, uh, deals in there and uh, see what you can learn for yourself remember never look straight forward always look around you for the outside forces may want to commit harm upon you